So what I'll do is maybe I'll uh, start with the easiest question which Neha asked, which is the first question. Uh, uh, what are the benefits of drones? The, uh, the, the sweetest and shortest answer is that uh, I tell the four one and seven four hundred and seventeen people now. You tell me an area where drones cannot be used. Okay, and uh, uh, I'll give you an extra maybe uh, uh, chole bature at gulatis, uh, very oily, spicy uh, chole bature at gulatis. If you can tell me one area where drones cannot be used. Okay, so you name a sector and and it's got use. It's nothing but eyes, ears, limbs in the skies. Okay, and when you have eyes, ears, and limbs in the sky, I mean the 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 potential is just unthinkable. It's almost like asking when we were kids, like uh, uh, in the 60s or 70s, or net or in the 90s about the cell phone and today when the cell phone and the internet has got together okay and uh, with a camera and a music uh, system also thrown into that phone along with some 10000 other apps okay none of us in in late 90s could have imagined where cell phone technology would be okay or where internet would be and what all uh, uses uh, 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 where some uh, 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 some of the applications that we do today we can't think of of life without the phone. This was not the case in the 80s and 90s. So drones are going to be just like that. They're going to be like the phone and the internet. Everybody will have a, a drone um, or drones. Okay. So now uh, comes to uh, key areas. Of course, from the government side. See what is the government's role? Our job is to basically govern national security, currency, foreign relations, and public welfare. And the last part, public welfare. Is our key focus. In fact, what the other thing, the, the things I mentioned, governance and all that, also is linked to public welfare. So our focus is not on pizza delivery. That, of course, uh, uh, Domino's and uh, Pizza Express will find a way. They are corporates and uh, they have uh, deep pockets. They can they can find a way. But uh, uh, our role, our key interest is in the farmers. Okay, there are, there are some 6.6 .6 lakh villages. These are the guys who put food on our table. That beautiful lunch that we had uh, and the dinner we'll have tonight is is uh, provided by these guys. So. Uh, and they don't have any tech uh, support uh, uh, far away in the villages. So, agri drones, and uh, there's almost a revolution that can be created by uh, by agri drones. And we'll come to that when we talk. Uh, somebody asked an interesting question about the union budget. So, agriculture, okay. Uh, then there's uh, uh, search and rescue. Uh, uh, when you have the Kerala floods, or we have so many natural disasters, uh, cyclones in Andhra or Odisha, or the, uh, say the river flooding in uh, UP Bihar or Assam. These are almost like an annual or once in two years kind of phenomenon. And they're not, not every place uh, uh, you can send a helicopter. Okay. Uh, of course, the NDRF and the Navy Army helicopters land up and they do a fantastic job. But you can't have hundreds of helicopters. They could be two, five, ten. They are limited. But drones, you can send hundreds of drones out there and get an absolute uh, real-time situational awareness. And then based on that, then you can send the helicopters. Even uh, on a maroon family, a family which is maroon on top of a, a, a kacha house or a pakka house and there's water all around. Now, normally, how do you uh, throw the food packets? You normally chuck them from a helicopter or even a fixed wing aircraft which moves at a very high speed. Which are drone and, and a lot of those food packets actually fall in the water, get damaged or get soiled or they just burst open and stuff. And uh, not many people can actually go and swim and pick up a packet. That packet is lost. With a drone, you can do pinpointed uh, delivery right in the hands of a person. Okay, there's another big revolution which is happening, and I'll stop there because I don't want to go on and on about the various government schemes. Okay, but this is almost like a revolution brewing in our villages. There are 6.6 .6 lakh villages. I'm sorry to uh, repeat it, but uh, uh, under there is a Swamitva scheme. I mean, it's as a full form survey of village areas using IT and stuff like that. But uh, basically, each in every village of India, every property is being mapped through a drone. And then uh, the Patwari, uh, along with the uh, land revenue officials, I mean, they put a, a white chuneki line around the, uh, the rural property. Uh, then uh, they radio the drone. The drone comes and flies and takes a, a picture of that uh, whole village. Each property, ka, each corner is then geotagged, okay, to the eighth place of decimal. And then uh, the once it's uh, verified by the government, it becomes part of a government property database, just like your Aadhaar card. Okay, so once your uh, uh, this thing uh, becomes part of the government database, you are issued what is called a, a Swamitva, your property card, and the property card will have the photograph, the the uh, the uh, the uh, GPS coordinates of the four or five or six corners of your house. Okay, and uh, uh, and uh, all your other details, Aadhaar card, name, and all that. The beauty of this uh, card, just like your Aadhaar card, is that you can you can you can simply uh, just tear off the property card or burn it. Okay, because it's already part of the government database. Now you can use this property card, uh, or even if you just land up in a bank and you just give your Aadhaar card number through the uh, Swamitva database, the banker can automatically get access to your property details 
and then you can buy sell it i mean you can distribute amongst your three daughters okay or even if there is a, a land acquisition happening some road project happening uh, there is a proof of ownership because i could be in the villages uh, in living in my village home for say 10000 years but i don't have a property uh, paper like you have in the urban areas your your parents would have property papers so this is a revolution which is happening very quietly not much is spoken about it and we've been given exactly 5 years to do that 6.6 lakh villages and and you'll be su- uh, surprised to know that on uh, 31st of january i'm told 36 lakh property owners have got their property cards in the villages 36 lakhs that's 3.6 million people have already got it so it's not just a scheme uh, 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 grandiose scheme uh, being talked about so and and there is uh, i spoke about search and rescue uh, also medicine delivery you may have seen that in the in the remote areas in the hill areas it's so difficult to go from hill to hill now your primary health center or the the, the government hospital could be in one place and uh, the other place could be uh, as the crow flies it could be just a kilometer to or three kilometers okay but to get to that hill top or go to that village sometimes it would take two hours three hours six hours or maybe the entire day in case of a snake bite i mean even to bring the person uh, to the nearest uh, hospital may take uh, Uh, three hours, six hours, eight hours of the entire night. Okay, and the person might, uh, or even if it's an accident case, the person may die just on the road because of of the sheer uh, uh, vibration that's happening in the, the the rickety vehicle that he might be traveling in. Okay, but with a drone, uh, that distance of ten, uh, twenty, uh, or thirty kilometers can be just be covered in say half an hour or or an hour, depending on the speed uh, of the of the drone, and you can actually deliver uh, medicines and. Uh, uh, Say a snake bite, a snake uh, uh, bite a serum or whatever. Okay, it can even pick up blood samples and bring back, and you can do the analysis and and tell the uh, the person what medicine to have. So uh, I'll just stop here. I don't want to go on and on. As I mentioned, uh, there is absolutely no area where drones cannot be used because these are nothing but eyes, ears, and limbs in the sky. Next, I go to uh, uh, Neha's question about uh, how, what kind of an edge do we have? Now, please note that uh, just like your laptop or your phone, the beauty is that uh, the physical part, because the physical part which you hold, okay, the drone uh, is like a, a a small toy or a big toy. It's a physical product, but the value of the physical product is just about twenty to thirty percent, almost seventy to eighty percent of the value comes from the intrinsic, the the software, which is uh, gone into the uh, the drone. Just like your laptop, in your PC or your laptop, the physical part is only twenty thirty percent. And seventy percent is all the licenses that, uh, say, Dell or HP or Apple or whichever uh, uh, PC or laptop you use. Almost seventy to eighty percent comes from the software licenses which go into uh, that the IP part. And this is something which Indians are good at. Okay, we are global champions in software. Hardware, me somewhere we miss the bus. And our friendly neighbor up north, uh, China and Vietnam and some of the Southeast Asian countries, they stole a march over us. Okay, so there is a gap, and uh, inshallah, on the uh, physical side, on the on the hardware side, also we'll catch up uh, through the PLI scheme that Neha spoke about earlier. But uh, uh, on the software side, uh, we have huge, huge potential, and that's where our strength is, and that's what will propel us uh, uh, forward. And uh, and the beauty of this is, I mean, if you're doing an agri drone, okay, something which does say crop assessment, you just by looking at a field, it can just take pictures, and based on the color green of the leaf, I can actually tell you. Where to? Yeah, not me. It's the software which will tell you where to put urea, or potash, or uh, NPK, or uh, just this uh, natural manure, or maybe more water, or less water, or do pesticides. So this kind of software, okay, converting the color green, uh, or even uh, uh, in the fourth week, sixth week, just like to track baby's health, you can actually track the the plant. The plant is also like a baby which will grow into a bigger plant and then yield the the fruit, the flower, and the fruit and the harvest. Okay, so all that crop prediction. Uh, an assessment and doing precision farming which means the drone will actually help you uh, 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 will tell you where to put exactly what in what quantity today what the farmer typically does is that that uh, 10 generations of of information that he has that that native knowledge that he carries which is fantastic okay but uh, even to spray you might have seen in uh, videos about what is called spray and pray so he'll basically take a bag of urea and start spraying it about or maybe he'll put that backpack on and uh, 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 in case of a pesticide And start pumping it with his left hand, with the right hand, he'll be spraying. Now this is so dangerous to his eyes, eyes, ears, his skin, his lungs. Okay, but he has to do it because there's no other way. So uh, with a drone, all you can do is you just feed in the uh, the coordinates of the of the of your farm, of your uh, uh, the the acreage that you have, 
and uh, the drone company itself will help you create. I mean, in fact, there will be software which will help you create a, a serpentine path. So it'll go left, right, or basically forward, backward, forward, backward, go up to the end of the field, take a U-turn, come back, and then again, take a U-turn, then go back. So he can do up and down, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, in exactly uh, seven to eight minutes, you can clear an acre of absolutely fine spray, absolutely of the same uniformity. There's no spray and pray here. Okay, it's only spraying and perfect spraying. And uh, uh, we are told that this is very sustainable because it cuts down almost 70 to 80% of the water, uh, which is used. Uh, it cuts down almost 20 to 30% of the fertilizer cost. And the fertilizer cost is a cost to the farmer as well as to you guys, okay? And to your parents who are the taxpayers. Because if you know some 70, 80 or 90,000 crores worth of fertilizer subsidies are given, okay, every year so that the fertilizer can be made uh, cheaper. So this is, as I said, just one use case. And in the, uh, the union budget, uh, if you notice, uh, like most ministries send a long list of uh, wish lists to the, to the finance ministry and to the PMO. And uh, uh, what happened was uh, that uh, in case of aviation, again, as usual, this tax break, that tax break, this help, that help, all kinds of things we wrote. The only four things that Nirmala Ma'am, uh, the Honorable Finance Minister, picked up were just four things. And they were all about drones, 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 and drones. So she spoke about drone as a service. She spoke about Kisan drones. Uh, she spoke about ITIs. Uh, in every state, there are uh, hundreds of ITIs. Some of them will pick up and uh, start uh, drone training. And she spoke about drone Shakti and she spoke about uh, the agri drones, as I mentioned. So in the union budget, uh, I mean, it, uh, what we're doing is anyway, we are going to do, but the budget is also maybe a, a, a very powerful indication of the vision and the thinking of the government going for because it doesn't talk numbers because uh, numbers anyway whatever we want uh, we uh, uh, there's a separate process and we'll get a budgetary estimate and then a revised estimate and we'll get the funds allocated but uh, if the honorable finance minister on the floor of the house uh, in a budget speech when she mentions mentions agri drones almost three to four times you can imagine the message goes down across the uh, the government then uh, the next question was about uh, new laws and what are the key considerations the key considerations are very simple National interest and public welfare. Okay, anything uh, which is not in the national interest or which is not uh, uh, for public welfare, okay, is not a great policy. And we do uh, make mistakes. Okay, in case, in fact, there's a live case here. Uh, we actually came up with the drone rules in March of last year, March 2021, and lo and behold, five months later, we repealed the March rules and uh, brought in the uh, the new drone rules, much more liberalized drone rules in August of 2021. That's precisely five months. This must be like a world record in uh, making a law and then repealing the law and then coming up with a new law. Okay, and uh, especially this government, it's not famous for uh, repealing laws. Huh? It brings in uh, laws based on ideology, based on thinking, based on uh, feedback or whatever be the considerations. Okay, and uh, uh, it is not famous for, and it's brought in lots of uh, very, very uh, strong uh, legal changes in the last uh, six or seven years. And uh, none of that is repealed, even if there's uh, uh, whatever protest you may do. So I don't want to get too political here, but uh, let's just say, uh, I mean, uh, the evidence is that in five months, in fact, not in five months, five months before it was released, which means within two months, uh, we got the marching orders, right? Okay, based on our feedback. And this again shows a very healthy, uh, that, uh, correlate, uh, healthy, healthy cooperation and coordination between government, the regulators, DGCA, BCAS, Home Ministry, the industry, the young startups, and the academia, the IITs and Indian Institute of Science and the various uh, triple IITs. Okay, the feedback was so harsh on us because uh, uh, somewhere, uh, see, laws, as you know, all students of law, you know that laws are always made in a context. Okay, so uh, maybe. Uh, 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 I don't want to get too, uh, uh, say, controversial, but the Sati Pratha or the Sati law might have come some time in way back in our uh, uh, by our ancestors, and then it was repeated. Okay, and then so many child bride laws, child. I mean, there's so many uh, laws which you might call uh, 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 absolutely uh, uh, unacceptable today. Okay, even on the gender laws and 377. I'm not a big expert on that, but you know, lots of sensitive areas where there are laws. Laws are always made in a context. Okay, and as the context changes, the laws have to keep pace. And the, the only consideration has to be the national interest. And in the national interest, sometimes you may hurt the citizens' interest in the time in the current times. Suppose we decide that in the national interest, we may have to raise GST rate by 2%. Everybody is going to cry about that. Nobody likes being ta paying taxes, especially a lowly paid uh, Babu like me. None of us uh, they say taxes and death are the only realities. But suppose in national interest, we have to increase the tax rate by 2%. So we'll all hate it. It will be 
against the interests of the current taxpayers probably but maybe if that money is better used okay it may be in the long term interest of the nation later suppose sometimes uh, the environmental laws many of you must be becoming experts who might be very uh, ecologically sensitive and you might be uh, uh, thinking of a focus in uh, environmental law you know that sometimes factories are disallowed mining is disallowed in the name of environmental laws airports the goa airport uh, the new goa airport in mopa was uh, the construction was shut down because of some issues with the the environment clearance that was given so maybe you're hurting the current uh, uh, population or the current uh, project uh, proponents or the current government but it could be in the long term interest of the nation so it's always national interest uh, uh, which which drives so same thing happened in the case of uh, drone rows also and as i mentioned uh, in 5 months if you could repeal a law by a government which is not known for uh, uh, u turns and repealing laws just shows that they had the humbleness we had the humbleness to take the feedback and also as i mentioned it's done in a context so in 2019 and 2020 you did see that uh, uh, there were lots of drone attacks uh, there was a saudi aramco strike there was some iran strike uh, lots of uh, uh, incidents in uh, say afghanistan and iraq so uh, somewhere the government uh, uh, got uh, i mean a little tilted towards the uh, the safety and the security side and that probably brought in so much of uh, uh, checks and balances in the drone policy that uh, when the industry saw it they, and academia saw it they realized that you know boss this is this is not this is going to bite and uh, this will actually kill innovation this will actually uh, enhance imports because you know, the, if you can't uh, make a drone here or fly a drone or test a drone in india and you're going to go if make us fill so many farms etc and pay so many types of fees i mean innovation will not be happening here and it'll actually help uh, i mean hurt this industry and help our enemies and uh, uh, we realized that uh, and uh, and also drone industry let's face it these are not uh, uh, a vote bank so it's not that i mean uh, uh, you can win a punjab or a up election uh, by by improving uh, the drone laws okay so drone laws it just shows the power of the technology was so huge that it forced the government to accept its mistake uh, have the humbleness to accept it and then redraft it going through public comments then again to law ministry and then getting it cleared by them then the hindi anuvad then the hindi anuvad goes for uh, uh, law ministry approval and then finally it's notified and all this was done between 15th of june and 15th of august 25th of august okay so uh, that answers the question about the new laws and the key considerations that go behind it even in writing a law and versus repealing or taking a u turn on a law in national interest uh, next question was about misuse of drones of course i mean uh, as they say in crude hindi uh, the chaku hai chaku se uh, sabji bhi katti ho gale bhi katte okay but uh, what kind of uh, uh, restrictions do you put on on a chaku now you can't just put an, a requirement of an aadhar or a passport every time uh, my um, mom goes to the market to buy a buy a knife okay so there have to be reasonable restrictions and uh, that's why as i said in the previous uh, uh, us rules the drone rules there were too many restrictions and then finally after a lot of debate with the uh, the uh, two letter three letter agencies ib and mha and naval intelligence army intelligence there are lots of security considerations based on that we come came to some kind of a compromise i can't share all the details but uh, like in the forms you would have seen now uh, passport is is mandatory okay so uh, uh, because uh, earlier uh, even to own a drone you need to have mha clearance and mha clearance can take anywhere from 2 months 3 months 6 months now we cannot uh, suppose we want to have 5 lakh drone users or 10 lakh a million drone users do you think that the home ministry can handle 1 million security clearances i mean uh, you'll become a grand uh, grandfather or a grandmother by the time uh, your turn comes for a security clearance so we found it was completely impractical so uh, the compromise was that uh, we last for a passport and aadhar and that is, that is good enough plus uh, the all the intelligence agencies have access to all the databases that we have so uh, all the drone owners the type certificate owners the guys who do dra- drone flying okay the flight path clearances so uh, the nodal officer in mha mod and some of the security agencies they have a direct access including the police uh, uh, the nodal police officers of each of the 28 states and union territories and all all the armed forces and their intelligence agencies they have access to the uh, database so i mean uh, you're saying i mean let let the show go on and if you have an issue i mean you have access to the entire database the flight path anyone flying in the yellow and the red zones okay uh, which are restricted zones Uh, you can always do a, a investigation or a pre pre event or a post event investigation in things uh, in case something goes wrong and uh, as regards permissions we said no mha clearance and no police clearance required for any license or certificate uh, that we give out uh, 
a passport is good enough because the passport at least ensures there's one police visit to your home at least once in 10 years. So we thought that that's a good enough way. Let's start. Let's take a leap of faith. And if there are not too many incidents, because this came in, uh, uh, this came in August. So uh, it's been six months and we haven't heard of any major uh, event or incident. Uh, and God bless, I mean, uh, uh, touch wood, it's not happened. Uh, and I hope it shouldn't happen. And uh, in fact, the Jammu incident, when it happened, it happened under the old laws. And that allowed us to counter the argument. It's a very strong legal argument that uh, uh, boss, the Jammu incident where at the Air Force station, uh, we had two grenades thrown by a drone. I mean, that happened under the old rules. The simple fact being that each criminal, each criminal by the very nature, uh, I mean, his very behavior is a criminal. He, his job is to break the law. So any law you make, whether you ask for passport and Aadhaar or passport and Aadhaar or driving license doesn't really matter. Because he is going to anyway assemble a drone uh, uh, quietly using uh, like a bomb. He's going to just watch some YouTube videos and the, the parts are easily available. You can always make a drone and break the law. So why punish a, a nice guy like Kashish Arora or say Neha Singh, okay, and harass them before they can actually fly a drone? The other big change was that up to 400 feet, we have completely deregulated uh, Indian airspace. Okay, other than some 4,000 red zones, which comprise, I mean, it's, very less, uh, almost 90% of India is now declared as a green zone. Uh, the airspace map is freely available on the website. There was a lot of debate on that also. But even that airspace map is now freely available. So you don't have to do any login, ID, password, OTP or something to access India's red zones. Of course, it's a low resolution map cleared by the MOD and MHA, but it's freely available. And uh, there, there were questions on law saying, I mean, are you giving our Chinese friends or Pakistani friends, uh, or, I mean, our red zones on a platter? And then based on a lot of debate and discussion, we finally agreed at a particular resolution that these don't tell you anything. In fact, there are far better resolution maps available freely on Google Maps. So what are we trying to avoid? But at least the, the drone operators now know where the red zones are. So they, whenever they design a flight path, these are low resolution map, but they get to know where, where there's, a, there's an atom atomic plant or a nuclear power plant or, or say a military zone or a cantonment and some sensitive areas within the cantonment, don't fly there, the rest of the places. You can't. So that becomes a big help for all the law-abiding uh, drone operators in the country. Okay. So uh, this was on the misuse part. So uh, we have simplified the systems a lot, but also given access to the uh, uh, to the agencies to all the data that we collect from the uh, from the uh, uh, from the users who fill up the forms. Then there was about certification. Certification is very simply that, uh, I mean, anything which flies in the Indian airspace, because it may fly over uh, what you call Papa Bravo Victor, people, buildings, vehicles. So, I mean, that uh, item has to be airworthy. You cannot just allow anything to fly in the airspace, okay, which is not certified. And that also has been made very simplified now. Uh, there is QCI, Quality Council of India. It comes under, it's a government body, but it's an autonomous body. Uh, its head is actually selected by the Prime Minister of India, uh, Mr. Adil Zainulbhai. And uh, uh, these guys, and as for the rules, they have 60 days. So when you design a new drone, suppose you're, you're a drone company and a drone manufacturer, you design a drone and you send it to the labs of QCI. They have some uh, panel labs. They look at your drone and go through a standard checklist. And within 60 days, they'll tell you whether it's an accepted or not. It's very similar to the motor vehicle uh, concept where your whenever uh, a Maruti or Toyota or a Mercedes comes up with a new vehicle design, or a new type type of vehicle, they take it to the uh, to the agencies. They actually type certify, and once it's type certified, say uh, Maruti Shias, then you can keep on Maruti can keep on building Shias as many as they want, thousands per day, without any check from the government, just based on a self declaration that uh, uh, this car actually conforms to the type certificate issued to. You. Now, if they change the, the the suspension or the gearbox or the, the the brake system, of course they have to go back to the authorities to get the uh, uh, to get the type certificate. So once you have the type certificate on the drones, you can just go to the Digital Sky platform, which is a single window uh, uh, clearance system. And as a manufacturer, you can generate your own registration number for hundreds of drones that you produce today, just like the car, uh, the automobile sector. So if you, if Kashish is uh, manufacturing drones, he has a type certificate. So of the same type, he can produce hundreds of drones today, go to the site, uh, put in the serial number of each of those drones and the system, it generates its own unique identity uh, uh, identification number, which is like your vehicle registration number. So now uh, you don't need to come uh, to uh, uh, to DGCA like in the past or the ministry. Okay, so it's completely completely uh, uh, made automated. I, I saw some question in the chat box that uh, which is the agency? It's called QCI. 
Quality Council of India. Uh, and uh, I mean, it's all available on Google. Just type in uh, certification of drones, QCI uh, will come up. Also, our drone rules, uh, this is another big thing which we did uh, with a lot of help from uh, a very, very uh, uh, smart lady uh, and very hardworking, committed officer called uh, uh, Ms. Veena Kothavde. And uh, Veena Ji is a joint secretary in law ministry. If you notice the drone rules, these are just 11 pages, just 11 pages. And another thing you'll notice now, this comes to the law drafting part. We were told, right, uh, by the highest authority, in fact, from the from the, uh, the PMO itself, that keep the law simple because laws have to be, as I said, uh, developed in context. They have to be developed keeping the end user in mind. Now here, the end user startups, they are not like our other end user like Indigo or SpiceJet, where they'll have a whole army of uh, highly paid lawyers or as an employee or as their uh, legal advisors who can uh, uh, give them advice on all kinds of uh, uh, laws and rules and aircraft act and this act and uh, taxation and all that. These are startups. Many of them have just four employees, five employees, five kids got together in, in the fourth year in engineering and they set up a startup. They don't have time to now read through a very, very complex uh, document as uh, very jokingly we, we joke with Neha also, you guys, I mean, your one sentence is actually 10 sentences. And we who come from the engineering background, okay, we write things in bullet points, which uh, lawyers hate because you love complicating things. But I'm saying this with all due respect, just to lighten the mood, it's becoming too too hot and too, too, too uh, what do you say, <laughs> heavy kind of a discussion now. So let's lighten it up. So uh, like Neha, when she speaks uh, seven sentences, here in after, there in under, notwithstanding, keeping this in, in consonance, read in, con uh, read in conjunction with the law section, so-and-so of that law. I mean, by the time uh, 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 less, less brainy people like us reach the second or third line, we've already lost uh, what we started off from, okay? And that creates a lot of work for uh, Link Legal because then we uh, automatically call up uh, Neha for support like, the, like a good doctor that she is, legal doctor. Okay, so here we were told, Look at the end user. Please write small sentences, small paragraphs, no notwithstanding, herein after, therein under, and all that. And give minimal cross references. Okay. So if you notice in that act, very few cross references have been given to say a motor vehicles act. And wherever you have to give a cross, and just, just repeat that. Now, good drafting also says that you shouldn't repeat because if you say as per privacy law or as per this law, as per copyright law, now if the original copyright law changes, I mean, uh, uh, your own a document will become uh, contradictory to what is written in the, the Mother Act because I'm a, I'm a subordinate act or maybe I've derived my, my uh, certain clause or a section from, from the section from another act or from the Aircraft Act. So you just give references, keep it to the minimal and uh, keep it very, very simple English and not a very deep, uh, uh, not big words. Anyway, we don't use Latin and Greek, but if so, if so, and whatever, uh, inter alia and all that. So uh, uh, if you know, read through uh, the, it, it's a it's a little bit, I won't say a paradigm shift. There's a very nice English word called paradigm shift, but there is a shift, okay? And uh, uh, Veena Ji in uh, Joint Secretary Law in the legal uh, ministry, uh, law ministry, and we really worked hard to wherever we found uh, long sentences, long paragraphs, we, we change it to easy to understand so that even drone startups, because as I say, ignorance of law cannot be condoned. You can't just get away by saying I was in, uh, it's such a complex uh, legalese that uh, I didn't understand. So we just went ahead and started selling drones without a UI. So you can't get away. Okay. And now with English being simplified, you can't uh, use that uh, excuse also. Okay. Now I'm just conscious of time. It's uh, 420, not a great number, 420. But uh, I'll try and uh, just do a little nation wants to know rapid fire like a uh, 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 good friend Arnav. Okay. Uh, next question was about privacy. Yes, yeah, so uh, we did, uh, now is another very interesting point. So we did add a paragraph on privacy. You can't do it, thou shall not, thou shall not. And it was again struck down by the law ministry because it's another basic, uh, uh, basics of law, make, uh, law drafting that you don't repeat a law. And we were told there are anyway very strong privacy laws. Now, if you see a very live case, uh, there was this lady who won, uh, I think a bronze medal at the, the Tokyo Olympics, a very famous one. Okay. And... Uh, the, uh, when she was getting a medal, that is a public photograph, went all over the country. All of us were so happy uh, tweeting about her. And uh, some people used that in an advertisement the next day. And this lady, uh, she sued those people who used, uh, her, who used her photograph, a public photograph in a public uh, channel or a TV channel or a newspaper. Okay. And she took them to court. And I'm told there was some restraint uh, ordered or something. I mean, I, I, I'm not a big expert on that particular case. but. Uh, I was told by the law ministry that in a country where you can't even use publicly available photographs, you can't just uh, photograph Amitabh Bachchan and start uh, selling Bonvita using his photograph. 
so you don't really need to to create yet another paragraph in your drone rules because the moment you write it you you are creating a separate rule under the drone rules on privacy so you keep quiet about it and the existing rules apply even if you notice in the drone rules later on we have said that while there are some penalties and fines and whatever which can be imposed under drone rules but this doesn't mean that you can be absolved of any other crime that you may commit under the statute india's india's laws so uh, if i take uh, uh, my drone over say a girls hostel say say uh, lady shri ram college and start doing, i mean you have road romeos on the streets you can also have uh, aerial romeos okay who are, who are, who are uh, flying drones uh, on top of uh, lady shri ram college one uh, complain to the police and uh, those guys will lose some very very costly drones and also spend some time as the guest of the state where they'll be treated very nicely okay so there are existing laws uh, which prevent you from i can't take uh, neha's or kashish's photograph just like that without their permission so in a country which has very strong privacy laws okay now you may always complain that yes uh, like a true activist i can always say that you know the, it's it's more yeah, uh, uh, more followed in breach than in uh, following the law or some such thing it's it's more by uh, it's more breach than than followed but okay that's a separate matter that's on the execution part so we were told that uh, you cut out that whole paragraph on privacy because there are already privacy laws and we don't want to redraft something which is already there because it may not be very comprehensive there could also be mutual contradictions there was this question about uh, make in india drones a very very good question and uh, it's it's a target area and uh, 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 like you see uh, the pli scheme now notice the difference and, and these are historical recorded known facts okay i'm not going to make any philosophical comments here only based on uh, actual facts as they've happened uh, 25th august we we clear uh, somehow girte padte we managed to notify the new drone rules okay and uh, uh, shorya rana just answered asked a question which i just answered yes we don't have a privacy section drone rules because already uh, there are privacy laws and as i said uh, a lady who took uh, all the newspapers to court or whosoever used or the brands who used her uh, are publicly available photographs uh, uh, of winning the olympic medal so this is what the law ministry uh, uh, veena ji at uh, law ministry told us okay so i was on uh, make in india of course it's it's a key target area because see drones they it is such a sensitive area that uh, right now the unfortunate fact is that uh, we are some 40 50 years behind uh, the west we are almost 20 years behind our lovely neighbors up north okay this cannot continue and drones are so ubiquitous uh, i mean right now also almost 90% of the drones the shaadi wala drones or some of the other drones almost 90 to 95% of drones are just one brand from from our uh, our uh, uh, friendly neighbor up north this cannot continue so if you notice on uh, 9th of uh, uh, 9th of uh, february just this month about uh, 13 days back we have come up with the new import rules which has banned all import of all drones so this is the biggest support we can give now again this is a legal question because uh, a lot of people did warn us that this may become a it's a wto issue it is not wto compliant they'll drag us to court this and that there could be ret retaliatory action but yet the government has gone and banned uh because generally uh, uh, now i know that i am on a, it's being recorded uh, we uh, see some of it may go on social media also but see uh i'm just trying to choose my words carefully here see a lot of times people also say yes by just like some of the other western countries or some of the other countries you can always use uh, what you call uh, uh, non tariff barriers like customer rok do container rok do are jiska wo crore rupaye ka consignment lock hoga automatically the word in the trade industry goes up ki bhai abhi mat lao ye customer wale rok rahe hain jnpt pe rok rahe hain chennai mein rok rahe hain ya whatever so uh, but uh, just see that despite all these i mean so five months we have uh, grappled with this issue because we had lots of feedback from industry from the trade from different ministries also many times have divergent views and after all that finally the dgft which is directorate general of foreign trade they came up with this uh, uh, import uh, uh, notification wherein all imports of all completed drones so cbu ckd which is completely knocked down semi knocked down all these drones have been banned and uh, uh, and uh, on the same uh, in the same notification all drones of all uh, i mean all components of drones have been completely freed up okay so this is uh, just another way to promote our domestic drone industry because at this moment our component industry will take some time components is actually a high volume low margin industry so you don't make uh, much money so unless you have volume millions and uh, millions of drones being produced there's no way that somebody can set up a battery factory a drone battery because drone batteries are very different from normal batteries here the weight is very important it has to have a very high energy to weight ratio and a very high energy to volume ratio because it can't be too big 
or too heavy because then it it hurts the 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 flying duration of the drone okay or the uh, the ability of the drone to carry more payload or or weight so uh, the drone battery or drone propellers or the drone motors or the drone airframe these are very specialized components and we'll need to get to that level where we start assembling almost uh, uh, lakhs and lakhs of drones and then maybe uh, some uh, somebody may think of uh, uh, setting up the component factory and once our component uh, volumes also go up just like we have banned drones we can always uh, drone uh, ban any item uh, we are a sovereign country and of course uh, keeping wp in mind we can do whatever we want to support our industry that was on make in india there was uh, one last question on contribution uh, by rjnu see rjnu is a it, it, it's a university created uh, just hold on for a second now we'll call karta hu bas yeah uh, see rg news basically a central government university under the uh, uh, under the ministry of civil aviation uh, it was set up as an act of parliament like most universities under university grants commission this is a separate university under the uh, aviation uh, ministry uh, i happen to be the current uh, vice chancellor it's a additional responsibility given and uh, i'm sure very soon we'll have a, a full fledged uh, vice chancellor also and uh, they are focused on uh, aviation uh, courses Uh, the unique part about aviation university is too that all our courses, we have three courses running in airport operations or airline and cargo and also a fire basic firefighter course all these courses are industry driven so it's actually the the faculty the syllabus comes from them we give the overall governance and our academic council and executive council which is full of all the industry people and these are all uh, approved by the president honorable president of india so we provide the overall governance and the infrastructure is world class infrastructure created at a very high cost okay and different we curate these courses based on what the industry wants so uh, coming to uh, i think there was this question about how can law uh, be taught yes i mean we'll be very happy in fact with neha we've been chatting and i'm sure very soon atul kashishan uh, uh, neha will get together and curate some kind of a course along with the aviation industry and this could be just a three day three month or a or a three year course uh, it is so flexible this university is so flexible just like us we we can start with anything and as we always follow a, a very practical approach in this government which is to crawl walk run i'll repeat crawl walk run so we don't want you to run a run a sprint or a marathon or beat uh, usain bolt first let's crawl you can start with a three day or a three week uh, professional course where you have a very packed uh, very tightly packed uh, uh, course which covers some of the major areas okay uh, of aviation law uh, because everything in aviation is driven by law it's a highly one of those last bastions of a uh, uh, highly regulated industry because you're dealing with human lives here the human lives inside the aircraft and there are human lives below the aircraft and these projectiles move these balloons with people uh, have uh, almost 200 300 even 400 people sitting inside it has fuel and it's moving at almost 800 to 900 kilometers an hour our cars typically move at 50 60 kilometers and after a drunk party maybe you can drive above the uh, safe rate at uh, 100 kilometers an hour okay on the gurgaon expressway but uh, uh, this this uh, this animal uh, this bird flies at 800 kilometers an hour so with such speed and it has to land on that narrow strip of land which is barely visible uh, from the cockpit or from your window if you see it a tiny uh, runway far away in the darkness and with those uh, little runway lights very bright runway lights and the pilot has to uh, judge his uh, glide path and land it and every 2 minutes there's a plane landing in in delhi mumbai and hyderabad bangalore airport So it's a very very uh, tough industry uh, very highly dependent on skill and technology and this hand eye and science uh, collaboration okay so that's why the laws have to be very very strict because we are dealing with huge amounts of uh, i mean human lives and uh, very costly assets and if god forbid uh, there's an accident i mean it falls in a residential area uh, god uh, forbid uh, i mean you can imagine the sort of damage and uh, it can cause and also the shutdown and the shutdown cost maybe it will be Uh, the entire airport could be because of an accident shut down for three, seven, ten days, and you can imagine what kind of a uh, economic and a financial cost and a logistical nightmare that would be if an airport. I mean, you shut down an airport for thirty minutes and there's chaos at the airport because every two minutes there's a flight taking off or landing. Okay, you shut down an airport, a Delhi airport, uh, for thirty minutes there'll be chaos. Imagine shutting it down for three, five, or or seven days. That's that's the risk involved, and that's why there's so many laws. Uh, governing aviation and it's a very highly regulated sector so on aviation law at rjnu will be very happy to consider any such course that you guys can come up with and uh, let's curate that do that and uh, uh, young students graduates post graduates or even professionals can come down and uh, do that three day three week or a three month or a 
even a three-year course there. Okay, Neha, I think I've stuck to time. It's, it's uh, exactly 4.31 on the clock. Uh, so if you have two, three more questions, we can take that and otherwise we can call it. So we have a question, uh, you know, from, I forget the name of the student, but uh, I think it was a very good question. Drone control education system to target tribal areas. How to tribal areas? One of the villages I have told you, Swami, some of those uh, very highly high uh, quality uh, sensor drones, which, taking, which are taking these highly uh, sensitive photographs, uh, uh, very sophisticated cameras. And uh, so you see, urban kids don't have access to it. And tribal kids, say in the Northeast or, uh, uh, or, or Jharkhand or Chhattisgarh, they have access to those drones. Okay, those kids come, mm -hmm. they watch, and it creates a scientific temper because once you've done the photograph, even the drone pilots sit down there, chat with the people, and I just do a little demo for the village, panchayat, kids, sometimes local MLAs and MPs land up because they've never seen a drone. Okay, and these are very uh, uh, sophisticated uh, five, six, or seven lakh uh, worth of drones, okay, which even the urban kids don't have access to. So for tribal areas, this is uh, the Swamitva scheme has been a great help. Agri drones uh, uh, also are in the operating in many tribal areas. Then our security forces, of course, use a lot of drones. So in tribal areas, there is uh, access. And yes, uh, we will also be opening up drone schools in every state. Okay, so young tribal kids, they are most welcome and we'll be very happy if they learn that. They can, uh, tribal kids that can help in uh, wildlife poaching, they can assist us, they can keep an eye, uh, search and rescue. If a tribal uh, person from the tribal village gets lost, I mean, you can, uh, I mean, a lot of people get lost. I mean, sometimes, uh, they lose their way. Sometimes they get drunk. Sometimes uh, they're uh, they're bitten by a, a snake or something. And these drones can really, really uh, expand the reach and and get to that person. Also in search and rescue, and also in in case of a natural disaster in tribal areas, drones can play a big role. Neha, yes, sir. Yeah, rapid fire, karlo, yes, sir. Last question before you let you before we let you go. Just one. Yeah, last. We can take about five questions, but jaldi jaldi puch lo. Jaldi jaldi puch lo. Okay, so I can give a rapid answer. Another question from Aranjay saying, the Krishi drones clearly have helped the agricultural sector immensely. Do you think we could help neighboring countries in using this technology? Oh, of course. Bhai, uh, uh, see, exporters, go, we always respect exporters. Any, we are encouraging all our youngsters. We are coming from some of the best colleges. They could have taken up a job. Many had job offers from the Tatas and the Bildas and LNTs and Airbus and Boeing or even uh, scholarship abroad. Many of these crazy guys have actually let go of those secure, high-paying uh, uh, corporate jobs in Delhi, Mumbai, Gurgaon, Bangalore, etc. And they are setting up the startups, struggling in, in a garage type of places like a, like a Steve Jobs uh, or a Mark Zuckerberg. And I hope they become as valuable as these guys. Okay. So, uh, of course, export market is a big focus. And uh, once they make these agri drones, uh, uh, even as part of the aid packages, I'm sure government will, uh, I mean, there's an aid package in Bangladesh or Nepal. I'm mm -hmm. sure uh, the government will pick up and, and export to those countries as part of that package. Neha? Yes, sir. Okay, so this this would be the last question. There is uh, th this comes from Vandana Srivastava, and she's asking: commercial usage of drones would deprive many humans of jobs. How <laughs> would we address that? Please don't ask this question, yeah. See, first of all, there's a marcher technology. As I said, uh, we are sixty or fifty years behind US and twenty years behind China. We can decide to go forty years behind China. And the drones, if they have to come, just like a lab, can you live without a phone now? I could have said that if you didn't have a phone, just to send a message to Atulji to send that file, I would have used an office boy. Yeah. Today, I just pick up the phone and speak to Atulji. We can even do this VC. If we didn't uh, have this VC facility, we would have had to meet physically. I would have loved to come to Faculty of Law in Delhi University. Okay, but it would have meant... There's so many jobs and so many cars, so many people getting together. I'm sure uh, the Natulji would have arranged some samosa today. Uh, he's escaped the cost of uh, treating us to samosa and cake pastry. Okay, so cake pastry, one of the job chale hai. Now should we stop the video conferencing? So see, I, I know it's a rhetorical question with all due respect to uh, Vandana Ji. And uh, don't ask these questions. Yet. See, <laughs> technology is technology. Respect technology. Because we didn't do that. We are trying to cover up our mistakes of the past. As a government officer, I'm openly saying we are 50 years behind the West. We are 20 years behind our lovely neighbor up north. The next war will be fought on drones. You may have a great fighter jet or great missiles, but I mean, once a fighter jet takes off and some 10,000 swarm drones come from the other side, you can have the best of the fighter jets. It's like a, a lion fighting against 10,000 swarm bees or a swarm of bees. It's not the bees who will get killed. It's the lion which will do Kathakali when 
uh, a beehive is broken on top of the lion. He might be the king of the jungle, a senior Simba, but he'll dance Kathakali when you have send the 5,000 honeybees or wasps behind that lion. So the future wars, I didn't want to get into this war mongering and this war business and that. Please realize there's a very destructive side of drones and the one of the reasons why we are also supporting a drone industry so crazily right up to the prime minister's level because we want them to innovate and some of the best suppliers to our military agencies. And they're working with many of the companies are the same guys. We're also working on agri drones and survey drones and uh, this thing. Okay, so just to close the story, it's the same thing as saying railway reservation ko online kyun kiya, computer kyun lai, mobile phone kyun lai, internet kyun lai. Because you nahi laate, sab jage manual use hota. So no, it will not. First of all, technology has to be respected and we have to be at the cutting edge with the rest of the world because jahan se bhi technology aani wo to aayegi agar hum nahi banayenge to import hogi aur agar kahi jobs jaane to jaane nahi to saath pe khulte bhi hain okay for every new technology that comes in if the, the, the huge it industries come in where was satyam and uh, whatever uh, not satyam but uh, infosys and wipro 30 40 or 50 years back but when they came today they are the largest uh, 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 largest job creators thousands and thousands of jobs are created per annum by infosys and and wipro and then the support jobs because the support jobs are 5x Somebody feeds those canteens and those, those uh, uh, the, the Innova and the Qualys, which bring people to the Infosys office and takes them back or TCS. Okay, so uh, uh, let's not get into this technology versus jobs. Uh, they'll be, instead of uh, just being a farmer's son, you'll actually be a drone pilot. Okay, as a farmer's son, do you want to be a drone pilot or just be like your father and, and just do spray and pray and get your lungs uh, spoiled?